Well, good morning. Good morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made and we are so glad to be included in it. Absolutely. I thank God for you. For those of you, my Saturday morning connectors, this is the Marketplace Connection and I am your host, Linda Hunt. And we thank God for those of you to get up on Saturday morning. I call you my Saturday morning connectors that you get up every Saturday you listen to the broadcast throughout the internet mediums and watching us on Facebook Live. We are so excited and so ecstatic about this particular broadcast today. I have a phenomenal woman of God here today. And I thank God for her life. And we are going to be declaring and decreeing and whatever it is that God has on his mind, we are going to do today. So I want you to stay connected. I want you to stay connected because that's what the Marketplace Connection is all about. We bring you people from every strata, every sphere of the society, the culture. And so we want you to stay connected because today we're going to the prophetic, religious mountain, whatever you want to call it. But we know that the glory of the Lord is going to be here today on this broadcast. So we want you to stay connected with us throughout the broadcast. And I just want to right quickly mention today that this broadcast is being brought to you by my sponsors the Northland Chrysler Jeep and Dodge my sponsors today we thank God for them they are located there on 14100 West 8 uh, eight Mile in uh, the city of Royal Oak and I want you to go by there and I want you to let them know that you heard about it on the marketplace connection now they got some great specials going on the great uh the grand cherokee laredos uh they have the chargers the dodge chargers uh they just have a uh, just a plethora of different types of products that you can be blessed if you need a car i want you to go visit my friends because they will do you good and let them know again because if you let them know that i sent you Not only will you just help me, but you'll also help them and you'll help this broadcast. Amen. So we just thank God for you. And I want to introduce to you one of uh, uh, God's choices. (laughs) 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 Prophet, prophetess, woman of God, prophetess, Sonia Epps. Blessing. We bless you today, Thank woman of you. God. Thank you. We welcome you to the Marketplace Connection. Thank you so much for having me. What an honor. <laughs> oh, yes, it is yes. my pleasure. It is my pleasure. It is, you know, I, I was sitting there this, uh, and it was just this morning, and um, I, I was sitting there, you know, just putting up the uh, advertisement for the uh, broadcast. And the Lord, he does me like that. He drops words in yes. my spirit, right? Okay. And so I was writing, Sonia Epps. And Sonic Boom uh, dropped in my spirit this morning. And so I said, okay, prophetess Sonia Epps, the Sonic Boom in the spirit. (laughs) Jesus. (laughs) So I said, Lord, what is the Sonic Boom? So, you know, I know that, you know, the Sonic, you know, uh, Boom and the Sonic Bomb, that's what he gave me, the Uh Sonic Bomb. And the Sonic Boom is, is something that, you know, it's the aircraft that travels faster than the speed of sound oh my and so when it when it you know when it gets past that point where it's going faster than sound it lets off this boom right oh, God. and so then i said well lord you said sonic bomb so let me look this up and see what is a sonic bomb so there's an alarm clock oh hallelujah oh, my. <laughs> i'm nervous <laughs> there is an alarm clock Mm. that they have out that's called the sonic bomb oh my and what it does is is it has a a sound to wake people up Mm. especially these college students when they go to college and they can't get up in the morning they're Mm. away from their parents they have nobody to shake them Uh and wake them Uh and so this this alarm clock is louder and it wakes them up you know shocks Mm. them up and, and it also has a shaker on it they, put, they can put under their mattress and shake them. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, God, what are you saying? <laughs> so he said, <laughs> I said, okay, this woman of God, because your your broadcast that you do on Facebook Live comes yeah. on in the morning, right? Yes, ma'am. And you shaking people. Yes. You waking Awakening. people up. Absolutely. You declaring the word of the Lord. Yes. You giving prophetic yes. words. Sound you giving alarm. prophetic I declarations. Yes. You interceding prophetically yes. and you shaking us and giving us oh. in the spirit realm what mm-hmm. God is saying. Yes. So I just want you to know that's what God gave me for you, oh Sonia Epps, <laughs> prophetess Jesus. Sonia Epps, 
the sonic bomb. Oh my, <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow, all of that. <laughs> Well, I do know that truly there is an awakening that is happening in this hour, in this time. There's a shaking, there's a shifting, all of that. There is truly a sounding the alarm. So that is truly the word of the Lord. Amen. But it is so amazing, you know, as well as I know, (laughs) prophetically, sometimes the Father will give us certain symbols and images and visions. It's like, what? Like, wow, God. What in the world? Yes. And it's like, oh my. So I, I hear you. And as you were speaking i began to hear the spirit of the lord say that that truly there is an alarm yes a sounding of the alarm and there's a sound that has to go forth and that is going forth at this very hour that is causing his people to awaken within their spirit man Mm. and where once they have set idle or dead meaning without the born again process uh, now there's an awakening and there's an awareness that comes when one is awakened Mm. so there's an awareness there's alertness there's eyesight there's yes. vision yes, and so on. there's hearing yes. all of that so that's what's happening in the earth yes. there's a major awakening that's happening and it's all over yes it's all over this thing is amazing yes. uh, one thing the lord said to me that uh, we are in the process that we are uh, about to really come into this place where there's going to be a great and grand revival and this revival is being done by the hand of the father and no one can manipulate it no one can touch it no one can take the credit credit for it it. no one can take God's glory what God is doing and what's happening now God the father in heaven is doing it Mm. and so that's why there's things and there is an urgency as well there's Mm. an urgency for people to hear thus said the Lord Mm -hmm. there's a hunger as well that is stirring up in the hearts of the people of God and that's why the Bible says that if we hunger and thirst after his righteousness we shall be filled and so God is responding to the hunger and the thirst that is in the hearts and the spirit man of the people of God and so that's why we see the intensity of the anointing and the glory of God and the movement of the spirit of God there is it's intense and the potency of it is rich and it is thick why because the father is responding to the hunger and the thirst within his people oh yes there's a cry in the yes, spirit it is there I is felt a cry. It on this morning oh, when yes. i was coming here god i said god i don't know what you're doing but yes. i feel it down in my yeah. shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> and yes. i i know you know that word when he gave it to me and i looked it up and i said oh my god this is what you're doing yeah what you are doing or you are like you said awakening your mm-hmm. people yes you know and they are crying out god i know oh, there's more my god. i know there's more you have for us mm-hmm. i know there's more it's that more you it's more. it's more come on it's, it's more. more to yes. this walk come on then getting up on sunday morning come going to church coming on, home girl. and rehearsing and going through cycle after cycle yes. no breakthrough no yokes being broken That's no it. healing no miracles no yes. the people are saying there has to be more yes yes Yes. And so when people get to that place, then that means they're open and they're ready for change. Yes. Then shiftings yes. can take place yes. because there has to be a willingness on our part as well. Yes. And so that's why he said, if you hunger and thirst, thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. Shall be filled. Oh Bless the Lord. God. She preaching I'm already, trying to okay. behave. I <laughs> no. promise you, I'm no, so you trying to be course. good. <laughs> you have free course. We give the Holy Ghost Hallelujah. free course today to say what he wants to yes. say. That's what the sonic boom is about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what the sonic bomb is about. Yes, is to shake and to wait so people can hear yes. what thus saith the Lord. Amen. You know, yes. there's shaking in the spirit. Yes, there's indeed. a beating in the spirit. There is a beating. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yes. Well, let me tell you a little bit about it. We are already preaching. (laughs) So Sonia, our prophet is Sonia was born and raised in the city of Detroit. Uh, She is the youngest of uh, uh, or the youngest, but the oldest of three sisters. And as a little girl growing up in church, she sang in the choir, recited scriptures, speeches, and was always reminded by her grandmother that she was special to God. Yes. And she is uh, a prophetess that has been, uh, she has been called into the ministry in 1997 while serving under the leadership of uh, Bishop C.O. Morton and his wife, uh, Lady Yvonne Morton, then trans, uh, transitioned to the Fountain of Truth under Bishop Michael Jones and Pastor Brenda Jones. Prophetess Eth received intense prophetic training and activation under the National Apostolic Prophetic School of Leadership Council of Bishop Robert Joyce Ministry 
and Bishop Michael and Pastor Brenda Jones. And so Prophetess Epps is also a CEO of the JDOR Consulting and ADOR, ADR Group LLC, where she is sought after for strategic efforts to negotiate and implement strategies that bring about success. She's sought after by attorneys, real estate investors, and business professionals for her strategic approach and prophetic solutions in the marketplace. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. This is a marketplace minister. Yeah. <laughs> She's just not prophetess Epps in the four walls That's of the right. church. No, 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 no. She not is prophetess Epps as yes. well, dealing with solutions, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I, one of the words that just kind of stuck out to me, mediation. Oh, yeah. You know, mediating, <laughs> yeah. you know, cases mm -hmm. and hearing cases. And that's what Jesus is. He's a mediator. Yes. Okay. Yes, and so that, that stuck out to me. And so she's called and has been chosen by birth to birth Kingdom Life Empowerment Action Center and the Kingdom Talk Ministries into the earth. Amen. Woman Amen. Of God. Amen. <laughs> Hey Amen. Thank you for just kind of running through that. I yes. really, every time someone reads the bio, I'll be like, oh, come on, come on. Get, just I couldn't get read it end. all. It's thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you. Well, woman of God, uh, as I said, you were born and raised in uh, the city of Detroit and raised in church. Yes. And so tell us a little bit about, you know, how church shaped your childhood oh my. and your life. It did such a foundation. I, I and it's so amazing because I, I remember my Easter speeches as a kid. <laughs> we had Easter speeches, we had Christmas speeches. They would put all the little speeches on the paper and cut it out, and you get your part, and you got to go home and learn it. I remember singing in a choir. I remember the choir rehearsal. I remember the Sunday school. All of that has shaped me. That was the foundation wow. of my walk, and yeah. I thank the Father for it. My godmother was an amazing. Amazing. She was. Uh, she didn't play. Uh, no, she didn't. She did not play. I mean, she, it was so she can look at us in the choir stand and give us a look, look, and we knew we better get it right. And there was absolutely no talking all in right. church. So all of that uh, with the structured home uh, shaped me really. That was yeah. my foundation. And a lot of times uh, we don't understand. We think is we think someone is being mean to us. We think mm -hmm. that oh they're strict. We mm -hmm. think that it's not fair. We can't do what everyone else is doing and right. and that was the case but you know the older I got and and I began to see things and my eyes began to open mm -hmm. and I realized looking back that that was all for my good and that's yes. what helped me become the woman that I am today the mother that I am today and the woman of God that I am today Amen. and I speak this prophetically and the wife that I shall become come any on. day now Amen. I have to say Amen. that because I walk on, by faith come on, and not by sight so yeah I'm so grateful for my upbringing Amen. my teachings Amen. even regardless of understanding a lot of times young people don't understand they don't understand yes but yes. it's okay that's why the father gives the wisdom the insight the revelation all of that uh, to our parents we need discipline we need to be guided that's right. we really do no matter if we think we know it doesn't matter what else is going on somewhere else the father knows our destiny mm -hmm. and so our childhood and rearing us uh, for some of us is he, he does things and he, he knows just like when we look at the life of Moses, mm -hmm. Moses had to be put in a basket and raised up in Pharaoh's right. house. Right. It all had to do with his purpose and his destiny. That's it. That's and it. so I, I'm grateful to, well, to that. Amen. I'm well, the amen. mother that I am today to all six of my children because of that upbringing. Amen. Well, you know, a lot of times people think people just show up. You know, oh, you my know God. all of a sudden, you know, no. you start hearing your no. name and you start going places. Mm -hmm. People just think you just showed up. No, nah. there had to be somebody that imparted. It That's right. You. Yeah. There had to be somebody yes. that corrected you. That's right. <laughs> rebuked you. All of that. <laughs> whooped you. All of that. I don't know what they're doing today. They time out today, <laughs> but it. whooped you. That's it. Whooped well, you. Well, you were afraid <laughs> to act up or to get in trouble. That's it. That's yes. it. Yes. So all of that is a part of the upbringing mm -hmm. to bring you to the place where God has you today. And thank God for it. Because like you said, what it, what it produces in you is That's discipline. Right. Yeah. 
You know, it, it yes. produces character. Guidance. Yes. Yes. Structure. Integrity. Come on. All of that. Yes. It takes all of that. And mm-hmm. even once you get grown and then God places you in the body, you know, of Christ and he gives you a pastor, he gives you a leader. That's you right. You know, leaders, you know, I mean, they have to be shaped. They have to be formed. We know it's in you, mm-hmm. but still you need correction. You Absolutely. need guidance. You know? So yes. it takes time. Yeah. You know, leaders aren't born overnight. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Oh, tell me it about it. Time. Yeah. No, not overnight for yes, sure. Yes, that's right. Mm-hmm. So uh, you knew that you had a call of God on your life. Was it as a prophet when you when you were you know when you were discovered in terms of God giving you the call? Was it at that time? You oh know uh, when you got the call from God? It was as a prophet. Is that what it was at that time? Is that where you how at, you were operating at that time? I mean, looking now, knowing what I know now, and looking back, if I had the understanding as well as the teaching as well as the vocabulary, mm. then I could have put two and two together, and it would have made sense. Okay. Because even as a child, I remember seeing visions. Even as a child, I remember standing up saying, wow, that's not right. Even as uh, at, in my teen years, I remember, and I've always, it seems like now I can say, I've always heard the voice of the Father. Mm-hmm. Always heard his voice. I remember uh, the Lord leading me to do something. Now it's like, wow, God. But <laughs> I had such an unction and an inspiration. And, and it was standing for justice, standing for what was right at age 14. When my... My uh, biological mother had drug addiction problems. My father had passed on. And, and, you know, there were times where there was no food and this, that, and the other. And I remember one day, just all of a sudden, I would just always write notes and this and write down everything. And I was very inspired. I probably shouldn't say this openly. I don't want to sow the seed of rebellion because it wasn't done out of rebellion. But uh, I, I, I went to the Social Security office. And I said, I want my check in my name. And they say, well, you're 14 and your sister's 15 and you can't do that. You know, you're not mm. emancipated. You're not right. independent. The court hasn't ruled this, that, or the other. And I said, well, if you don't do that, then you cut the checks off. And I'm 14 years old with my file in my folder going in to see a representative in the Social Security office. Mm. And long story short, and it, it, it gives me clarity as far as why I'm so into the seven systems and advancing the kingdom of God. And when we advance the kingdom of God, mm. it is we're bringing the atmosphere of heaven into the earth realm or the different systems. So at that meeting, the ladies, they, they said, well, we can't do that. I said, well, then cut the checks off. Because we weren't being taken care right. of, we weren't eating right, we didn't have what we needed, and and all of that. Especially after my father passed, things just transitioned. I'm sure my mom was grieving yeah. in her right. own way the best right. that she could. And so, long story short, they said, "Well, we have to call your mom in for a meeting." And I said, "Oh my goodness!" And fear tried to grip me. I said, "I'm in trouble." <laughs> and so then she she came in and they talked, and then they said, "Well, you know, what do you want us to do?" And then she said, "You know, I love her." God knows I love her and let her rest. But uh, long story short, they put the checks in my name and in my sister's name. And so I was 14 years old receiving my Social Security checks. Then I went and got a bank account and got set up direct deposit. So all of this handling business at that age, now that I look back, I know the father was with me. His hand was on my life. And even when my mom passed, it's in my bio, how uh, just growing up, you see things in the church. It, it, it makes you put up walls. You begin not to trust, not knowing who you can trust. But that broke down when I went to a friend of mine invited me to Second Unity. Full Gospel Baptist Church in the city of Detroit, Grand mm-hmm. Boulevard in Gratiot. Right. Bishop Greg Davis right. was the pastor at that time. And she invited me, and I heard the Spirit of the Lord telling me to go to the altar. I said, but I'm scared. And I'm just sitting there, and I can feel the presence of God. I'm hearing him drawing me to the altar to give my life to him, to be rededicate my life to him. And I said, but I'll do it this afternoon, Lord. I'll do it in the afternoon service. But long story short, when my mo- I did end up joining the church that afternoon. Help mm-hmm. me, Father. But anyway, I wasn't obedient at that time, but I got it now. <laughs> okay. But anyway, um, and when my mother passed away, uh, Bishop Greg Davis came to my mother's funeral. And a lot of times, and I wasn't prophetess, I wasn't minister, right. I was just a layman just coming right. to church with my little girl. And, and so I'm thinking I'm nobody, but I'm coming. You're thinking nobody is paying you attention. Nobody yeah. cares. Nobody right. really loves you. This right. is, you know, people just say that. Right. And so I'm saying this to help somebody that's yes. struggling with the church and faith and trusting in God. And so I, I was I was there. And when I went to my mom's funeral, 
Bishop Davis and his uh, armor bearers and staff, they came in. And I looked at my sister and I said, did you tell them? How do they know? I said, Bishop Davis is here. That meant the world to me. Mm. Because it, it caused walls to fall where I had walls up where I wasn't letting anybody in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Didn't yeah. want to share too much. Didn't want to open up too much. Right. So that built my trust. And I said, wow, he cares. Mm. A lot of times people don't think That's people right. care. That's right. And so that right there, that just set the stage for my life. It did. And then Amen. when she passed, he prophesied to me over the pulpit and said, God said he's going to be with you and your daughter. And you won't want, you won't lack. And you're going to be okay. And it's been that way. Amen. Praise it God. It has been that way. So I bless the Lord. That's in the bio. But All yeah. Right. So I hope I answered your question. Oh, yes. Yes. And you have six uh, beautiful children that yes. assist you in ministry. Six. Yes, ma'am. Four girls and two young men. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at you. I would never believe this yeah. woman of God has six children. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, oh my God! Yes. And so, tell us how you manage ministry and family. How, how you know? Because oh. I mean, you are. I mean, hey, God has in this hour He is using you, mm -hmm. and I see your your name and your face on flyers, oh. and you know, you have six children now. Your children are pretty much grown now. Yeah, yeah, you're they are. Babies. Yeah, I, my youngest is fourteen. Right. My oldest is twenty nine. And it's so amazing. I just, oh, my God, that's a whole another testimony within <laughs> itself. Because when the Lord told me to kind of transition, and I probably shouldn't say that, but it's my story. But when he gave me the instructions to uh, leave and get out of the marriage, he told me to take all six with me. But prior to that, he, he would tell me, I will hear prophetic words like, you and your kids are going to be fine. And I'm like, me and my kids? What about my honey? What if, you know? <laughs> but, you right. know, that's a, you got to get the book on that one. Right. And so as far as managing uh, six kids, business, ministry, all of that, clients right. and uh, tasks, household, bills, <laughs> you name it. You know, that is a very good question. One thing, two things I'll say is number one, the Holy Spirit gives me the wisdom. Yeah. Number two, I uh, implement systems. And so you build systems, just mm -hmm. like when Jesus was getting ready to feed the multitude, the 5,000 men plus women and children. He told the disciples to sit them in the groups of 50. Right mm -hmm. then, he implemented a system so that they can handle yes. the load yes. or the capacity yes. or the quantity right. that they had to serve. Mm -hmm. And so in that, I just implemented systems with mm -hmm. all of my children from when they were younger. The older no get the diaper bag. This one no get the bottles. This mm -hmm. one no hold their hand. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that worked because they have six different personalities coming up. <laughs> yes. You know, I didn't ever really have to whoop them. I had this system. I'll give the command and then I'll count to five. And you better do what I say before I get to five or you're in trouble. Okay. It worked. And it's so funny now, even though they're, I have young adults, teenagers, right. and I'll start counting. <laughs> and they start moving. And they start moving. <laughs> and I do it now with humor, right. but it's just really to get control of the atmosphere. Right. You follow me? Yeah. And it works. All right. But the Holy Spirit is the key. All right. Yes. Amen. All right. So you are, as I said before, a marketplace minister mm -hmm. um, that uh, is trained as a mediator and yeah. active on four court rosters yeah. in Metro Detroit, uh, a trained arbitrator. So tell us a little bit, how did you get into doing that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> how did I... A lot of times uh, with my life, when things shift in the marketplace, the father shifts me. Mm -hmm. And so I started out, you won't believe this, but I have license. I used to have a licensed daycare center. I had a boutique. I wow. done all of that. Then when the market shifted in the daycare center, I don't know if people remember this, but Head Start came in right. and took all our daycare kids and offered them free Head Start. Oh. So when free Head Start came in, it took our babies, So which affected our daycare businesses. And so at the time, my friend, her name is Joanne, shout outs to her. We're like, we got, we got to do this. We, I'm making flyers and all of this. And then one day she told me uh, her husband was looking for someone to work in the mortgages. And so I went through all that, all that, all that. And so what happened is I ended up being a consultant, helping and assisting homeowners from losing their homes when the market crashed. And so after that, I kind of just... It just came up. Somebody said, well, hey, what about this? You know, you do this, you do that. So I took the mediation training, mm -hmm. not understanding the totality of it, what it, not understanding what it involved, none of that. Mm -hmm. I always had a desire, though, to go to law school. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that this was a navigating tool that the father would use to kind of shift and get me in the arena. 
Mm-hmm. And so I went and did the training, 40 hours of general civil. Then I just kept training, take kept taking the training in the different specialty areas, domestic truancy, restorative practices, probate, juvenile, you know, domestic. I said that, family, all of that. And so I've just taken all the training. Then every two years you have to keep, you know, do yeah, additional yeah. training. Okay. But I love it. Okay. You solve problems. And you're still doing it. I still do it. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. But see, God was already setting you up uh, in the spirit realm because of what you had did when you went in there and mediated on behalf of your you and your sister yes, and your siblings. That's right. You know, and so yeah. you went into the social security yep. office <laughs> at 14 had years to be, old. Had to be God. <laughs> <laughs> had to be him. Like, I'm here to mediate yeah. on behalf of of me and my, my sisters That's and my right. siblings. Mm-hmm. And so you were already, God had the trajectory of your life That's right. already set already. up to do what you do. Mm-hmm. And you still do it in the spirit. Yes. Yes, man. Because <laughs> I get on in the morning when I get up and, and you on and I'm like, okay, she, she off and running. Oh, my. <laughs> Praise God. To God be the glory. And pulling down stronghold. Yes. And, I mean, interceding. Mm. And, I mean, profound. I mean, it's just amazing. And it's like, wow. Yeah. And so that that spirit of mediation, you know, yeah, that spirit of intercession Come coming on. before the father on behalf yeah. of the people. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, yes. And 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 mediating for them and 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 praying for them mm-hmm. on their behalf. I mean, it was already set up. You was already yeah. in that line mm-hmm. to do what you do. Yes. You know, yes. that's why you the sonic bomb. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> to God be the glory for sure. <laughs> it's all him. Praise God. Oh, my God. So you are a full-time student. Yes. Completing a degree. Yes, I am. In business, entrepreneurial uh, mm-hmm. studies. Mm-hmm. And later to attend, as you said, you wanted to go to law school. Yeah. So you carry a double-edged sword in the kingdom. Um, talk a little bit about that. Wow. Well, oh my, I, I, hmm, I am a full-time student and I, I've always loved going to school, even as a child. Uh-huh. I loved going to school. I don't know. I just think my whole life is, just, now that I look <laughs> back at it, it was just so unique. Uh-huh. Just the things that I would desire, like at the end of the school year, you know, they clean out their classrooms and the teacher gives you all of these papers. You can go home and play school with your siblings, right, right. all of that. So I don't know. I've always loved school. And um, my father, oh, bless his soul, but he, he would sit us down. We would come home from school and my father would sit us down and have these talks with us. And he just drilled it, drilled it, drilled it. Go to school, be somebody, hang out with this type of person. Don't hang out with that type of person. You could do anything you want. You know, don't don't bottle up. You know, don't don't just take anything. Have your own. So those were the talks that my father used to give to us all the time. And, and one day the spirit of the Lord reminded me of that. And the Lord said that he had imparted. He was imparting in us because my father died like maybe a year or two after that. And so with all of that wisdom and teaching and training, he was really imparting and pouring into us and give us the nuggets and the tools to navigate through life. Mm -hmm. And so I've never stopped going to school because of that. Even the things that I was experiencing at home with my mom due to her being, you know, drug addicted and all of that, Mm -hmm. I would still get up and go to school. And then mm-hmm. end up getting in a relationship. Uh, it was domestic violence at, at a young age. Mm-hmm. But I would still get up and go to school because of what my father instilled in me. And, and just going through so much domestic violence in high school. One time it was so bad. I had two black guys and mm-hmm. hospitalized and all of that. Wow. And I was still determined. Put sunglasses on and went to school. Talking mm-hmm. about high school. And so he pushed that in me. And I, I was determined to graduate and to graduate on time even getting pregnant in high school in my senior year I was still determined to graduate on time went back to school two weeks after I gave birth because my father instilled that on how important education was and so even to this day I'm pushing myself I know I should have been finished I think over 20 years ago I started but thank God I can put all I put all those credits up so I'm really almost finished I have like maybe six classes left to be finished with my degree and it is my desire mm-hmm. to go to law school. Okay. Now, with my schedule increasing and, and, and all of that, I'm yeah. afraid if that's going to happen or not. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, Lord, but it is what it is. My that's life it. does belong it, it, to him. And, and if that is, you know, the will of the Father and that's, that's what you desire, and yeah. I believe he gives us 
our desires, the, the desires of our hearts, yeah. then it will happen. Amen. It will happen. Amen. And we're just going to believe that it's going to happen for you because that's what you desire to do. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. So the um, other thing that I, I wanted to talk about because of the fact that uh, you carry a double-edged sword in the kingdom, uh, you have a kingdom assignment uh, to birth kingdom life empowerment action center yeah. and kingdom talk mm -hmm. in the earth. Mm -hmm. So explain to uh, the viewing audience, uh, a lot of times we talk about the kingdom. And I, I don't know if everybody really understands that the church is not the totality of the kingdom. No, it's not. And that it is in the kingdom and it is a voice in the kingdom, um, you know, that uh, God has given us that we can bring others into the king, the kingdom so it is a prophetic a prophetic voice in the earth that god is you know raised up that we can uh bring others into the kingdom of god but then there's other systems as you said business entrepreneurship religion government media entertainment uh, you know um education yeah. all of those mm -hmm. seven systems yeah, absolutely and the church's job is to influence the culture Yes, of is. all of those kingdoms. Yes, it is. That people can be in government mm -hmm. and yeah. be a part of the church. Absolutely. You can be in media, which I am, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. be a part of the church. Yes. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't mean that you just have to be because you're a prophet uh, on Sunday mornings that you're waiting for your turn. Mm -hmm. Or you're an evangelist that you're waiting for your turn or mm -hmm. a preacher or whatever the case may be. Right. So your 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 influence and your 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 uh, message can be in any of those different spheres. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the kingdom and uh, what that means. We, we find um, in the book of Matthew, chapter number four, and we're very familiar with this because this is where Jesus, the Bible says, after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was led by the spirit of God into the wilderness to be tempted by the enemy. And after these three levels of temptations, uh, Jesus declared that it is rich and we're very familiar there. The Bible says later in the chapter that Jesus went forth preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Mm. When we hear the term kingdom, I think that we can equate or relate to it, the word government, rulership, or dominance, or dominion. Uh, the kingdom is, we look at uh, Revelation chapter number 11, verse number 15, it says that in the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall rule forever. Even back in Matthew chapter 4, the devil took Jesus on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of mm -hmm. this world and their glory. And he said, mm -hmm. if you bow down to me, I'll give you all of these. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the word kingdom it has to do with government mm -hmm. it has to do with government it has to do with uh uh establishments just like we look at the kingdoms of this world we look at family like you mentioned business mm -hmm. marketplace all of those are kingdoms that make up the world or the culture mm -hmm. of the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. And we are called to advance the kingdom of God. What does yes. that mean? To advance the kingdom, to advance heaven, the yes. atmosphere of heaven yes. into these systems that are governed by demonic principalities, wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. If you look at every system of the world, there is an assigned principality because Satan is the God of this world. And he gained that jurisdiction by the fall in the book of Genesis with right. Adam and Eve. Right. And so when you look at all of the systems of the world all seven systems mountains uh spears mm -hmm. just some terminology but means the same thing there is a governing uh principality that rules and that hovers them and a lot of times because the church which is the church is the avenue or the entryway or the gateway into the kingdom mm -hmm. and so how do i know this when jesus was having a conversation with the pharisees he told them he says you you shut up the kingdom of heaven and you don't enter in. And neither do you allow those who are entering to enter in. Mm -hmm. So it is the religious system or the religious system that is upheld by demonic forces that block access to the kingdom. And in the kingdom of God, this is why John, in the book of John, chapter number three, Jesus tells Nicodemus, he says, no one, you can't see the kingdom unless you are born again. Mm -hmm. You can't enter the kingdom 
unless you are born again. Why is it necessary to be born again? Because in the beginning, when Adam and Eve fell to sin and were they deceived by the enemy, they died spiritually. Right. So there is a necessity to be born again. So you have people in the church who are not born again of mm. the water and the spirit. Yes, so there Lord. is no awareness. There's a form of godliness. There's scripture. There's traditions that causes God's word to be a non effect, but they're not awakened. Mm -hmm. And so we talked about that before about the awakening. So mm -hmm. now people are understanding we have been redeemed yes. back to the father. So now we can talk to the father the same way that the father communed with Adam in the beginning is the same way we have that access because of the blood of Jesus that was shared. Amen. Amen. And you know, in, in, in the Bible talks about uh, where the, that the, uh, the mountain of the Lord mm -hmm. will be chief among the mountains yes. and that many will stream to it. So that's what we are here to do, to mm -hmm. establish the mountain of the Lord Absolutely. among the other kingdoms among the others. so we can have influence. So in that last day that they, that those that, you know, will stream to that mountain because it will be the highest mountain. Yes. Yes. It will be the highest yes. mountain. And so, you know, the kingdom of God is among us. Mm hmm. Oh, yes, it is. It's among us. Oh, yes, it is. And we are those that are bringing the kingdom of God into, into, the, into the earth realm. That's right. That's because right. it's among us. Mm -hmm. We are the church. Mm -hmm. You know, people are looking for the church, but you are the church. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. anywhere you go, That's you right. have the influence. The influence. You know, you have the Holy Spirit. You have all of that in you. So you should change atmospheres mm -hmm. when you come into a, any atmosphere, any culture. That's right. You have the power to change it. That's right. Absolutely. Just by walking in the room. Yeah. It's you know? the same way at age 14. I didn't have all the knowledge or the awareness, but mm -hmm. I, I knew I was being led by the spirit of God mm -hmm. to go into the social security office and say, this is what I want. That was breaking policy. That's breaking <laughs> yes, rules. Yes, it was. Yeah. And, and they, they asked my mom, well, what do you say? And she said, give it to them. Wow. And they had to put them in our name underage not 18 and, and so, so your from, mom being that she was your mom had to really come to you to get you know i mean you know access to the social security check yeah. so he changed he shifted it <laughs> yeah because he's a guy he who shifted provides. the order yes he did wow he's not governed to these to these laws he can invade i, I remember even in business i think that's why i have been effective wow. and impactful in the area of business because of that, because of the prophetic anointing, because of the awareness of the kingdom, we are to impact or infiltrate different systems and bring yes. about change. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you stated that you walk unapologetically in your God-given oh, God. <laughs> and to exercise your God-given right to exercise uh -huh. dominion in the earth realm. Yes, unap unapologetically I do. Uh, as a person, you know, I, I'm a loving person. I will say I don't want to kind of pat myself on the back. I don't want to do that. But, but you know who you are. But I know who I am. That's it. I, I, I really do. And when the Father speaks, that's it. Nothing can change it. Nothing can change my mind. Nothing can shift that. When the Father says something to me, when the Father speaks, when he confirms his word, I stand on it. I believe it no matter what else is being said, no matter how unpopular it is. When he speaks... I, I don't walk. I don't apologize because I know I've heard from the father. Mm. Yeah. And there are often times when he speaks, I say, father, I don't want to do that because of this, because of that. When he told me to go on Facebook live, I said, Oh father, please. I don't want to do it. And I fought not that I was being rebellion, but he's my father. I can communicate with him and tell him exactly how I feel. I said, father, if I do that, then this is this and people, this and people are mean. They're going to be saying this and all of that. I said, I deal with enough warfare already. I said, I don't want to do it. And he, he gracefully worked with me through the process. And every time, everywhere I go, somebody say, well, God said do this. God said do that. That's why I love the father so much. He's not a taskmaster. He's a father who loves. Come on. He, he, he doesn't beat us up. He, right. doesn't, he doesn't hurt us. Now, he does chase them whom he right. loves. That right. isn't right. so right. necessary. But in the process, overall relationship is not a broad beat. It's not control. It's not yeah, controlling, dominating you, and none of that. And so I've learned yeah. to appreciate my relationship with the Lord and accept him not only as God or my God, but my father as well. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, I can tell you, I can attest to the fact. Tell them what time you come on uh, oh, in the morning yes, and what day. I come on on Monday and Thursday, and I had to shift that. We come on at 8 o'clock. I used to come on at 7, but sometimes you got to shift up. You know what I'm saying? The enemy think he got you. You know, you just got to make a move on him. So 
I come on at 8 o'clock every Monday and Thursday, Facebook Monday. Live. Okay, Facebook Live. And yep. that's Sonia Epps. They can get on your page. Yes, they can. Okay, so if you want prayer, if you want, uh, you know, someone uh, that's giving the prophetic word of the Lord in the morning before yes. you start your day or mm -hmm. on the way to work, yes. tune in to the woman of God as she is praying and shaking systems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sonically, yeah. and see, you don't even know she's she's speaking prophetically. I have uh, there's a prayer care kit that uh, the Lord has instructed me to put together, and I've been working with the company getting the towels ready. And on the towels, it said prayers that shift systems. Wow. And she just said it. So. <laughs> yes, amen, amen. Well, she is doing it. Do you have a number or anything, or any you know that people can call you, or they just get on your? You Facebook know what? They page? can get on the page and they okay. can send an inbox. I do have a number. I don't. I'm not. I don't have it handy. So okay. I don't, I'm big on professionalism. I don't okay. Start all right. That's all right. That. That's all right. Yeah. Well, I am going to. I, and and I just felt led to to do this, and I told you that. So I'm going to give you some time and some space uh, to release. Uh, whatever it is, uh, the word of the Lord that you have for the people, uh, they know that this is the Marketplace Connection. And, you know, I, I do allow the spirit of the Lord Hallelujah. to uh, dwell in uh, the, the broadcast whenever whenever I feel led to do that. And I when I have a woman of God like this, uh, I recognize uh, who I have in my space. Bless you. I recognize uh, that I, by the spirit of God. And so I want you to release Whatever God is saying oh on your heart to the people, okay? Yes. So the floor is yours, prophet. Oh, my gosh, you know how much time I have. Well, I want to um, first. About 10 minutes. Okay, that's good. I, I want to say thank you as well for allowing me to be here and for having me here. Mm -hmm. That I don't take that lightly at all. Whenever you grace an audience and someone shares their platform with you, I'm so grateful uh, for the opportunity to be here. But what I do want to say to the people of God, uh, for those who are listening, and you may be struggling, not understanding, and wanting to know what your purpose is is sometimes you only think that you have a purpose when only uh, when you're in the pulpit. But purpose is bigger than that. And sometimes you get discouraged and you feel like you're not preaching and you're not having opportunities. Uh, but the purpose in the kingdom of God is bigger than the four walls. The father tells us in the word of God to pray that thy kingdom come, that will be done. Jesus told his disciples to pray that the harvest was ripe, but the laborers were few. So, so I, I want to encourage someone right there that's struggling with understanding who they are, understanding their purpose, understanding what is it that I am to be doing. Religiously, you think in your mind that you're not doing anything if you're not preaching the gospel, if you're not standing behind a pulpit. But just as you have heard in this interview, God has graced us and anointed us to go outside of the four walls. If you look yes. at the ministry of Jesus Christ, study his ministry, look at what he did, look how impactful he was, look at the level, the type of disciples, look at their professions. Jesus had entrepreneurs attached to him. He had the doctor, he had the tax collector, he had businessmen attached to him. That's who he pulled in as his disciple and so don't limit yourself to the four walls yes the bible says to forsake not to assemble ourselves together we must come together yes. come on i am my brother's sister my brother's keeper i am my sister's keeper we yes. have to come together that's how we're fed that's how we're charged god has set a system in place a structure in place called the church and that's where we come to be born again that's where we come to learn of him that's where we come to study that's where we come to learn of the word of the lord that's where we come to connect our other sisters and brothers that are within the body of Christ. But even more so than that, there has to be a shifting that has to take place. Your mind, you have to be, your mind have to be renewed. The Bible tells us in Romans and not to be conformed to this world. Even though we're in the world, we're not of it. But he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, be changed, be shifted and be shiftable by the renewing of our mind. It is so important, people of God. God, that our minds are renewed yes. on a continuous basis. If not, you will become fashion of this world. You will begin to think like the world. You begin to operate like the world. Yes. So because there's so much conversation, there's so many voices that are releasing words. You got social media now access. You have so much access to everything and everything is not God. That's why even the more you have to constantly renew your mind so that you don't lose hope and so that you don't lose faith. And so you do not be become like the ways of the world. 
I want to encourage you right there to understand that the place, your job, your home, your family first. I've always been taught, Linda, that my first ministry was family. And that's why you see my children assisting me now in ministry because I've been mother to them. I've served them. I've taken care of them. I didn't date. I didn't put people before them. Even when I went through divorce, even when I went through time, I didn't bring nobody in my home. I wasn't trying to replace their dad. I taught them to honor their father, even if they felt like he wasn't there and didn't do them fairly. I always taught them to honor their father. So that's why you see uh, my children serving me in ministry because I was a mother and I'm still am. And I'm a proud, I'm happy to be a mom, especially it's such an assignment that God gives. So the first and foremost part of our ministry is our family. One thing that I've been praying, oftentimes you hear people say, restore prayer back in the schools. No, I say restore it back in the home, yes. restore hope back in the home, restore love back in the home. The father has given me an assignment. He told me this some years ago that I would do a prayer, a back to school prayer. And I finally years later, just released that, just recorded that prayer two weeks ago. It has been recorded. We're working on the editing piece of it and all of that, that goes with that. But I want to get that in your hands. I really do. I want to get that because the key, we got to take the, the, the responsibility off of the school, off ah, of the teacher, yes, and we got to put it back on the family. You got to bring it back to the home. That is the foundation of family. Yes. God created family before he created church. I'm not saying that you don't need it because yes, yes, you do. But I want you to understand that the power, the hope and all that we're looking for in other people, it starts in the home. So my prayer, my cry as a prophet of God is that God will restore his presence back in the home, that the father restore his love back in the home, that the structure of family will be restored back in the home, regardless of what the world says is right. The Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the mm -hmm. spirit of the Lord yes, will yes. raise a standard against him. Yes, I God. say, who is the standard that is being raised up by the spirit of the living God? Who is the person who is the family that will stand for righteousness and say, this is what family looks like. According to Genesis, a man shall leave his mother and his father and cleave to his wife. And the one, the two, they shall no longer be twain or two, but they shall become one. And the Bible goes on to say to tell them to be fruitful and to multiply and to replenish the earth in the book of Ephesians chapter number six the Lord gives us in his word children mm -hmm. obey your parents in the Lord for this is right that's the first commandment with promise honor your mother and your father that your days may be well mm -hmm. with you and that it may be long on the earth that is family that is the structure of family God gives it to us in his word and no matter who says opposite or contrary to that his word is right will you be the standard that god is raising up in the earth to infiltrate yes, the systems to stand for what is right to walk in wisdom by the leading and the counsel of the holy spirit will you be the standard that's all i have to say today all right in amen. jesus name amen. Hallelujah. praise the lord oh my hallelujah. god well we heard from the woman of God today. Blessings. I pray that those things that she has said, that, that, that you have taken them to heart, that they have gotten in your spirit and that you will know who you are Absolutely. in the kingdom. You Absolutely. are, uh, you are important to yes. God. He needs each and every one of us. All of us have yes. a peace. Mm -hmm. No one has a corner market mm -hmm. <laughs> on the kingdom of mm -hmm. God and no. the things of God. Right. So no matter what you do, you know, no matter what God has called you to yes. do, as she said, the kingdom is within you. Yes, so wherever you go, God is going Come with on. you. He yes. goes before you. Oh, he yes. sends his spirit before you. Yes, he does. And you are there to do business on behalf <laughs> of the kingdom of God. <laughs> yes. Outside of the four walls of That's the church. It. As she said, the four walls are very important. Mm -hmm. We we were raised up in the things of God. That's right. You know, leadership, you know, prophetic training, all of church. those things. Come She's on. had prophetic training. Yeah. I've had prophetic training still going still through prophetic learning. training, mm -hmm. you know, to increase your gift, yes. to per uh, perfect your gift. And so you still need the church. Yes. But oh, yes. once you leave the church, just like when you leave your job. <laughs> you go home. So when you leave the church, then mm -hmm. you are going out into the world and you're there to make a difference. That's right. You're there to be a change agent. So we just want you to know that you as the kingdom agents of God, mm -hmm. that you are there and God is going to use you if you allow him. Yes. If you will allow him to use you and stop being afraid. You have purpose and your purpose matters. Whatever it is, 
If you bake cookies, if you if you uh, if you're on, uh, you know, social media, wherever you are, yeah, God has just given you the opportunity to speak right. for him. That's right. To be a voice. Yes. You know, for him. Mm -hmm. And so we just thank God yes. for this woman of God. Bless today. you. I thank God for you as well. <laughs> the sonic bomb oh, bless God. <laughs> that has come to shake us and wake us. And, you know, and to uh, allow God's heart to be penetrated yeah. into what he is saying to you today. So mm -hmm. we just thank God for you today. Yes, uh, uh, Sonia, we, we bless you, prophetess. We thank bless you. your ministry and we bless your life. Thank you. I receive all of your that. very life. I receive it. That God will continue to give you strength. Yes. To do what he is calling you to do. Mm -hmm. And no matter what. I just prophesy to you mm. when you walk into places that the very atmosphere, mm. that the enemy, yes, agents, <laughs> that they will have to flee yes. because of the word of God that God has placed in your heart yes, God. to speak to the people of God, that it will shake the very foundations, yes. that it will awaken their ears yes. and their minds and their hearts mm -hmm. to know who they are oh in this God. hour. It is time it for is. us to know who we yes, are. Yes, it is. It's yes. time. Yes. And so I thank God for you thank for you. being here today and yes. for gracing the uh, the microphone Market. of the Marketplace yes. Connection. Thank you so very thank much. Thank you. I thank God for the work that he's put in your hands. Amen. And this is what advancing the kingdom of God looks like. This Amen. is what infiltrating the system of media Amen. looks like. That's right. That's I, what we're here I, to yeah. do. Media and, has so much, there's so much power in it and people don't yeah. understand. If, if they put out a word right now and told people to go buy water, yeah. Everybody is going to go buy water. Yes. That's the power that media has over the minds of the people. That's right. Influence. Influence. And that's what we are called to do, to yeah. influence. So we as the kingdom of God, we have to take our rightful places in media as well. And influence. So that truth will go out. That's right. And accurate information accurate. will go Amen. out. Amen. Praise yeah. God. Well, I thank God for you. And I yes. thank God for those of you that came last week to the Amen Sister Gathering. Wow. Oh, my God. How it was, was it? It, was, it was sold out. We had, oh, we had so much. It was just, God just came in the room and I, I just thank God for allowing me to even be the host of it. Yes. He gave me every detail to it. Uh, right. We worked on character. We started out with the I, me factor and all of the things that we talked about. Same yeah. thing where you talk about yeah. in the garden where fear originated uh -huh. from. Yes. The law of the first mention. That is where wow. fear originated from. And we talked about that uh, fear, procrastination and, you know, and grudges mm -hmm. and, and, you know, all of the things that came along with that, you know, mm -hmm. and so we just we we saw women getting free and I had them, you know, they had to own it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's enough to say, yes, OK, I'm still angry and oh, I'm still bitter and yeah. oh, I'm still unforgiving. Mm -hmm. But no, we're going to talk about it and you're yeah. going to own it. And we're going to all together. Yes. It's a no judgment zone. That's good. So I had little badges. They had to put it on. So if you're angry, <laughs> I want you to wear it. You got to wear Cause it. Because the day we're getting rid of it. Yes. Because we can't go any further you until we do until. the in, you know, the inside That's job. Right. We have to do yeah. an inner work. Wow. We have to do wow. that first before we can really do with God. Because I had to get whole mm -hmm. to do what I'm doing now. That's right. So did some, I. Yeah. There's yes. some things I went through. Absolutely. And, and they heard my testimony. They yes. heard my story. But God took me through it yes. so he can bring me to the place of where he can use yes. me. See, I, I was hurt, like I told him, but I'm not hurting. Amen. See, because I had to get healed. Yes. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, and so when you're carrying all those things, you're still hurting. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, you know what? That's what I honor about my, uh, my bishop, Bishop Michael Jones. When I first transitioned to the Fountain of Truth years ago. Okay. Uh, and I'm saying, oh, I'm a prophet. I need to do this. I need to do that. But no, he left me sitting right there. That's right. So that I could be healed. That's right. Absolutely. And I appreciate that so That's much. Right. That's right. right. Yeah, Absolutely. I appreciate that. That's right. You mm -hmm. have to get whole. Gotta be you healed. have to get whole in yeah. your body, your mind, your spirit. Yes. And so I just thank God, you know, for the women that came. And I believe they left. They were changed. And we, at the end, then we talked about business. But before we talked about business, we're going to talk about you. Yeah. We didn't heard enough about <laughs> Hannah, Anna, Mary, Elizabeth. Come on. on. We're going to talk about you today. Stay, well, some of us are <laughs> Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all had a purpose and yes. you have one too <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> that's so true <laughs> there was a time when when uh, uh esther was the queen <laughs> but on. then it became a time when she had to become the deliverer that's right come on the spokesman on the behalf of the nation come on 
Okay. Yes. And so it's a time. And once you get rid of those things, then it's a time for you now mm-hmm. to be somebody's deliverer. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Praise well, God. we just praise God yes. for all of those that have listened today. This has been the Marketplace Connection. I thank God for this woman of God, for Prophet sure. Sonia Epps. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, you can get on uh, Facebook Live if you're not on her page. Like her page so you can hear her every Monday and, and Thursday, Thursday at mm-hmm. 8 8. Uh, 8 a.m. I get on her page and hear the word of the Lord get prophetic intercession whatever it is that you need that day to make your day a fruitful day I get on her page and hear it and I also again want to make mention of my sponsors we thank God for the Northland Chrysler uh, Jeep and we thank God for them and Mr. Ken Thomas who was my former boss when I sold cars for 12 years and now is the only African American Chrysler dealership wow okay wow And so I want you all to go by and to uh, support our businesses right there on 8 Mile, uh, right there at 14100 West 8 Mile in Royal Oak. Go by and support the businesses they have. uh, I mean, just taking that dealership and brought it to another level. Already breaking records, already breaking records from the former owners. And so I want you to go by and support him. He's a man of God, a man of integrity. And please go by and support him. And so I thank God for them today. So yes. this is the end of the broadcast, but certainly not the end of our relationship. <laughs> no, <laughs> never. No, ma'am. Not at all. Not at and all. So I thank God for you, my listeners. Please uh, listen again next Saturday. We have uh, Coach uh, Precious Brown that will be here. We're going to be talking about business next week. Okay. So for those of you that want to be an entrepreneur, uh, you want to write books, you want to be uh, just, you know, in business. Be here to, uh, next Saturday at 11 a.m. And our coach, Precious Brown, will be here to give us what thus saith the Lord. Christian woman of God that is going to be here and talking about business and about how you can become a coach. All right. So this has been a great day. Yes, it We has. thank you for listening. We will see you next week. The Marketplace Connection. And remember, upgrade your thinking. Expand your capacity. Leap into your destiny. Mm. Because God wants to give you more. You're more than what you have become. Have a great day.